Gaslighting is a particularly insidious form of emotional abuse. It is a type of manipulation where you're led to doubt yourself and your own perceptions. It's a way of your abuser turning the focus away from them and keeping it on you. One of the hardest things with gaslighting is that it takes a long time to recover, even after the relationship is over. So what I offer you today are five ways that you can start to recover from gaslighting. The first is with the use of what I call reality anchors. Reality anchors are something physical, something tangible that reminds you of what is real. Uh, my example was my ex-husband committed bigamy and he was arrested and charged. And the, the particulars of the story were completely crazy. Hollywood. And he, uh, he also engaged in gaslighting. So I really would start to doubt myself and doubt uh, what I was remembering. And so I kept a printout of his mugshot in my purse for most of that first year. And whenever I start to started to think that I was that I was crazy, I would pull that picture out and look at it as a reminder of what really was the reality. So keep those reality anchors close to you and use them anytime you're starting to sort of spin out of control. Another thing that's important to recover from gaslighting is distance from your abuser. No contact is best, if at all possible. Just completely and totally remove them from your lives. And yes, that includes social media. This is a time when you need a break. You need some distance because it's the only way that you're really going to gain some clarity. Now there are times when no contact is not possible, especially if there are children involved. And if that's the case, you want to keep the contact as distance as possible. For example, a phone is better than in person. Email is better than phone. You know, you want to, to just get as much distance as you can from it. And whenever you do have to have contact with them, it might be best to revisit those reality anchors first, just as a, a little reminder. Not only do you need to remove your abuser from your life, but there may be some other people that are believing your abuser. And unfortunately, you may have to cut them out temporarily at the very least, or maybe permanently. Gaslighters frequently engage in something called character assassination, where they will tell lies and stories about you to other people. And gaslighters, unfortunately, are believable. And so you may find that others are listening to their stories and have reached certain conclusions about you. And so it may be best just to give yourself some distance from those folks as well for at least a time. Now, there may be some people that you can't remove uh, from your life. Uh, one of the ones that I had <laughs> was actually a little funny. I had a, a psychiatrist uh, for those first eight months after the divorce. And I'd been seeing her for about six months when I pulled out um, a piece of paperwork from the court that had just happened to come in the mail that day on the way to that appointment and showed it to her. And the look on her face showed me that she actually didn't, you know, that was the first time she understood that my story was real, that even my psychiatrist didn't believe it. And so that was a little bit of a wake up call. Um, and, you know, obviously I needed her in my life at that point, but it's one of those that, you know, be, have some compassion for those around you that are struggling to believe all the details in your story. Because for most people, this is Hollywood, you know, this is soap opera, and so it's hard for them to relate. So it's not necessarily a sign about you, it's just a matter of what they've dealt with. Another tip for you is avoid what I like to call the rabbit hole. Um, with gaslighting, it's really easy for one thought to lead to another. Um, and you can become almost obsessive and trying to follow those breadcrumbs and trying to understand what happened. And, you know, you're, you're going to spend some mental energy there. And in fact, in a moment, I'll talk about some healthy ways to do that. But what you want to avoid is when you notice that it's becoming obsessive. 
And anytime that you're seeing that happen, you need to interrupt the, that cycle. Because if you allow that, that sort of obsessive energy to take over, it's keeping you from healing. It's keeping you stuck in that cycle. And it's one of those where the more frequently your brain travels those grooves, the deeper they become and the easier it is to fall into them again. And then finally, one of the best tools for longer term healing from gaslighting is journaling. Journaling is a wonderful place for you to really start to separate the facts from the stories that were told to you about the facts. And it's a way for you to start to re-examine some of the beliefs that you had and really start to separate your perceptions from what you were told you were seeing. And one of the best parts about journaling is your journal's not gonna judge you. And so it's a very safe place to explore as you're starting to get some distance from what was done to you. Throughout this process, be patient with yourself. Gaslighting is a horrible abuse and it's one that likes to take up residence within your own head. And it's gonna take time for you to separate yourself from those thoughts. So be patient, but also have hope. Remember that you are not who your abuser said you are. 